Morning all. Um, hopefully you can see me. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, fingers crossed. Who knows? Uh, oh, got people in already. Um, morning, Rob. Morning, uh, Derek. Morning, Lee. Hope everybody's all right. Can you hear me? That's the first question. Um, I can't really post comments back on all the platforms. In theory, we should be live on YouTube, Facebook, Modern Railway Scenery page, Facebook, uh, Scale Modern Scenery page, and the Railway Modelers group. Um, at the moment, yeah, I can't post post comments back through the keyboard through um, this streaming software for some reason. It says it can't post comments to Facebook, but I can post comments to YouTube. But whether I can do that and build the kit at the same time, I don't know. No idea how this is going to go. Nervous as heck, so we'll see. Um, anyway, so far, I think most people can hear, so that's all right. Brilliant. Right, I'm going to be a bit one-man bandish because I've got to flick between cameras and all sorts of stuff as I build this, so you'll have to bear with me. First live build I've done in about two years, so um, let's see what happens. Um, in theory, anyway, it should work. But I've got two cameras. I've got, um, this one looks at me, and I can show you close-ups of things. And I've got one looking down at the cutting mat, so you can see what I'm doing and what I'm working on. I'm going to try and drive it all myself, but it may go pear-shaped. I may even knock my glass of water over and have gone over it all and completely messed all that up. So we'll see what happens. Uh, right, so purpose of today is to run through the building of KX59 Humpback Bridge. This is weird because it mirrors with the screen I'm looking at. Right, KX59 Humpback Bridge. It's a pretty straightforward kit to build. It's got some nice curved walls and curved surfaces, and you can see the, de the deck of the bridge is curved. Really simple trick for achieving that. It's um, a fairly common thing in laser cutting. What we've done with that is we've used um, what's called a living hinge. So I'll share that works in a bit. So preparation-wise, what have I done? I've printed out everything. Obviously, this is as you would receive it in your kit if you were going to build one. So you've got the front cover, instructions, we'll walk you through the construction. In theory, I'll follow the instructions, but I may go off at a tangent occasionally. Uh, and then you get a set of wraps, which are things like the road deck and various other bits. So I'll just say morning to a few other people. Morning, Edward. Uh, Edward says he's uh, a nice easy kit, even he did it. Edward, your building skills are brilliant. Um, morning, Eric. Yep. Oh, morning, Dave. Yep, we're all good. Thank you. Um, really nervous, but we're good. Um, I need to remember which screen to look at. Look at my phone camera rather than the screen behind it. Um, so yeah, we're going to run through the build of this. So in the pack, you'll get a set of wraps. This is the road um, extension wraps. There are other wraps with it, but I've cut those out for a little bit of preparation, which I'll run you through in a minute. Um, it's not quite blue, Peter. So I've not got loads of stuff that I've done earlier. All I've done is cut the parts out. So you don't have to sit and watch me cut bits of paper out and sit there for hours and then bored to tears. Um, so right, let's try and switch camera and see what happens. Bear with me. Right, so, so you can see, see me, me and, and my desk. desk. So what, so what I've, I've done, done is I've prepared, prepared a number, number of bits. bits. So these, these are the bits. bits. Bridge, Bridge size. That's, that's, the that's the bit for the camera there. That's the bit for the arch, arch underneath. underneath. That's, that's the bridge deck. deck. Uh, uh, and you've got an overlay which makes everything nice and smooth on top of the deck. As you'll see, we'll bend the bridge. The living hinge gives you a kind of a textured surface. So this is the living hinge that was going on about. So here we go. I'll, I'll mute like that one. one. Hang on. Let me, Let me mute, mute that, that one. one. Right, there we go. Sorry. Right. I uh, can hear me twice. Apologies. I told you to be um, playing it by ear a bit. Uh, so, right. This is the living hinge. Um, what it allows us to do is it allows us to create bendy pieces of MDF. You can see that there. Uh, hold that up to that camera. There you go. Got a nice bendy piece. So, this is 3 mil MDF, but all we've done in the design is we've made lots of cuts in it. Um, to create a thing called a living hinge, and it allows you to do quite interesting things with MDF. So you've got a nice flexible thing. Obviously, if this was just straightforward and uh, three mil MDF, it wouldn't be flexible at all. So that allows us to create the curve for the bridge deck. The same thing applies with the uh, curve on the arch underneath the bridge. And again, the same on the ends of the bridge side. So same principle, living hinge. So it's common in laser cutting. And it's used for all sorts of things like book hinge, uh, book covers and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I know Echo from two cameras. I need to remember to mute one and not the other. So, but I, it's kind of not an automated system. So I have to remember to click on the right things. Uh, and I knew there'd be a few teething issues, but it is what it is. See how it goes. Uh, so right, laser cut bits. I've started popping some of them out of the sheet. And all we've got to do to release the rest is give them a bit of a gentle sort of 
gentle inch bend and it should release the parts from the, from the sheet. So go get the bridge sides out. These should pop out really, if I'm careful. Try not to break anything. Right, that's the bit for the arch underneath the bridge. So that's again, living hinge look. We've got this curved thing. Um, the only thing I've forgotten to bring upstairs, which I thought about, was elastic bands, because you could do with these to hold them, hold the uh, arch in position under here. But whether anybody will hear me downstairs and bring some up, I don't know. I might be able to shout downstairs in a minute and get some. Uh, and again, bridge sides, there you go, with the hinge. So that allows us to, uh, you can see there, bend the sides. So that's the main MDF bits. Uh, laser board bit, I've not released yet, but we don't need that just yet, do in a bit. Uh, and also what I've done is if I remove me from this thing here, uh, right, I've also cut out some of the wraps. Uh, oh, we've also got the coping stones as well for the top of the bridge. Um, but I've cut out the wraps. I've just got to finish trimming one of the wraps around here. I haven't cut around the, um, the arch section to go around the edge of the bridge. Oh, that folds around into the arch. I haven't put slits in there yet. So I need to do that. So what I've done is I've cut out the sides, cut out the uh, insides of the bridge, the inside wraps, and then I've cut the arch wrap and the roadway wrap. So these are just paper. Um, they're printed on a laser printer, big laser press, so they're waterproof to a degree. Um, so nice and easy to work with. Tools-wise, Cutting, uh, what's it? Cutting mat, craft knife, ruler, Yoohoo. You can use Pritt stick if you want, but I like Yoohoo. Um, it's not the non smelly version. I always use the smelly one because it's cheap. Um, rocket car glue for some of the more detailed work if that's your chosen glue of choice. It doesn't, you don't have to use rocket. Otherwise, you can use the um, deluxe laser cut kit glue, which is quite good. Um, Rocket's good for the laser board bits. This one's really good for the MDF stuff. You can use Superfatic, you can use PVA, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Paul says, will I be providing uh, alternative wrap designs? Um, yeah, I've got a brick one to do. Just got to sort the, uh, what's it? The arch for it. Um, and what else have I got to do? I want to do a more Yorkshire stone kind of thing. This is kind of Cornish slaty granite stuff that's on this just because it's taken from a, a local a wall not very far from here the picture is um but i will do some other ones i just need to get some more stone textures but we've been asked for um brick and various other things so i'll do those so anyway yeah i'll use that for the main construction of it because it grabs really quickly um i've got to work fairly quick with it because I have a tendency to leave it standing with the very fine tips and i end up blocking the nozzles up because with this you'll see really good glue but it comes with a really fine kind of needle type nozzle thing and they block up really quickly and as it's quite warm in here today um, with the heating on it blocks up rather swiftly so if I disappear for 10 minutes it means I've gone to go and wash the glue tip out because I've left it to dry for too long uh, right best get stuck in I suppose is anyone building along by the way brothers or are you just going to watch and uh, watch me make a fool of myself <laughs> right Okay, so first part of the instructions, release all the MDF bits from the sheet, which we've done. So I've got to try and work and position my hands in the middle of the cutting mat so you can see what I'm doing now. Um, otherwise I'll start working off camera, you have no idea. Right, so there we go, bridge sides and main deck. So the first part is to get the sides onto the bridge deck. You don't need to put apply any glue for a start, the thing will hold itself together. Um, the living hinge is kind of uh, are a bit springy um, outwards as well as that way. So they sort of grip things. Um, so for putting this together, it's quite useful. I just realized I've got a bit to trim off the end of here actually. So I'll just trim that off. Yes, my hands are shaking. It weren't yesterday when I was doing a test with Dylan. It was fine, it was all right. But now I'm doing it live. It's rather nerve wracking. Right. So, uh, a couple of other people joined. That's all right, being late. You can watch this. There will be a replay of this, actually, before... Um, well, when it's, when it's all done, I will save it. I'll publish it to YouTube. I'll publish it in the group, and it'll be on the Railway Modelers Club as well. Um, so, how many people... Can we tell how many people are watching now? 69 people. Oh, brilliant. That's all right. Good. I thought I'd be sat here talking to myself. Um, so, that's good. 
It's a shame I can't hear you, actually. After We'll have to do one with multiple people involved in the build, actually. Uh, do we make this an engagement? Not yet, but there's no reason why we can't. And I just need to test things. Uh, we could do the bridge deck out of one mil laser ball. We could do the sides out of two mil. Uh, and the arch underneath would probably be out of 0.8 laser board or one mil laser board. So that would work. Um, I'll give it a try. In fact, Dylan, I'm sure Dylan's watching. If you want something to do, uh, you can jump on and have a go. Uh, morning, Tim at the scrap line. Um, there's various people popping up, just as Facebook users, so I'm not sure who it is. But anyway, morning all. Um, Dave said, just chill, you're doing great. <laughs> Easier said than done, I can tell you that. Um, right, best build the thing, really, aren't we? So first thing, put the sides onto the bridge deck. So if you start from one end, in theory, that should. There, first end slots in, and if we gently pull on this piece and sort of, or pull and push, push this side piece here and pull this one, pull the deck, you should be able to slide, in theory, without chewing it up, that next peg in, so that one's nearly in, then work up to the next one and get that one in, and then do the same again with that one. And then do the very end one. This one's a bit more stubborn. If we push that, it creaks a bit as it goes together. But there, it's a nice tight fit, and that holds itself onto the side onto the main bridge deck. So now you've formed already formed the shape of the bridge. You can see that nice curve coming there. Okay, and then you've got also there's a gentle curve at both ends of the bridge sides. So all we've got to do now, when the other side's on as well, is we run some glue down the joints and let that dry for a couple of minutes. Um, we just run some of the laser kit glue down the joints and that'll hold it all nice and tight. So, next side. Now the first side's gone all right. I'll try not to mess this one up. Okay, so that one's on. And the next piece is in, there we go. So all I'm doing is just, just slotting, you can see there, just slotting those pegs into the holes. So they are quite tight, but they do fit in fairly easily. There we go. Looking like a bridge now. And it hardly needs any glue really, but obviously you don't want it coming to pieces over time where if it gets there, uh, as wooden, wood expands and contracts and stuff, especially if you lay out in a loft or a garage or a shed or something like that, you don't want it to, um, starting to come to pieces. But as you can see, if you look closely there, the hinge is kind of where it's bent, it's gone closer at the bottom, you've got these bigger gaps here. Now the reason we've got an overlay is because if we put the texture sheet straight on there, you may see these, it's a bit like putting carpet down on floorboards, um, which I was talking to my dad about yesterday. Um, if you, you can see the grooves in the carpet, so the same would apply to this. So if you put your road deck wrap over the top there, um, when you've glued that down over time, you might start to see the textures from the bridge deck coming through. So all we do is we've got this laser board um, deck that lies over there. Now you may wonder why that laser board deck is way longer um, than the main deck of the bridge. And the reason is it gives you um, kind of extensions on each end to allow you to blend it into your layout. So that's the idea anyway. So if you're mounting this, obviously this is gonna sit roughly a centimeter above your baseboard. So there's the road level there. You've got sort of a centimeter-ish of wall at the side of the bridge. Um, that's gonna sit, that's sitting on your baseboard there. You've got a big, big step either end. So if you put this on, and then obviously when it's cut out, and then you use these as well, these extensions, you can blend that into your road level, down to baseboard level. You can have it em, um, embedded in some, uh, I don't know, plaster scenery or whatever. Uh, not plaster scene, plaster-based scenery, um, all that kind of stuff. So that allows you to blend your bridge into your layout. That's what that's for. Right, I'm going to shut up for a minute, concentrate on gluing this. So in theory, if my glue tip is working, yeah, it says, right, I'm just going to run bead of glue down there. Don't have to have don't have to have loads, you just need just enough to grip each section. So it's not going to come to pieces while it's starting your layout. 
a bit down there. So this should go off fairly quickly, this laser cut glue. Um, if you haven't tried it, part number's DLAD87, I think. Um, yeah, 87. Not the cheapest of glues, a bit like Rocket. It's quite expensive, but it, you'll build loads of kits with it. One, one bottle will last you ages. Um, and obviously with the fine tip tip on the end of it, you can get the glue in some fairly tight corners. So I'm just going to whiz that down there. Right, that's the top done. And then just give it a make sure it's, it is still nice and tight in there. I'll do the same on the bottom. This is probably the longest and most tedious bit of the assembly. I'll just try and... Uh, Do this quickly and I'll answer some questions. Uh, would you use copy decks to assemble? You could use copy decks, although it depends on trying. You, you wouldn't get the sort of the detail. This is nice because you can just get it in just where you want it. You could use wood glue, you could use copy decks, you could use you who um, the problem is you haven't got that fine tip thing, whereas at least with this, you see you're just putting the glue right in the corner, it's not going to get in the way of any of the wraps. I say I know the glue is not exactly cheap, but it's worth the investment, I think, because. You, you you build, I mean, this is the first bottle I've had, and I must have built 20, 30 kits with it. So you could build the best part of the built, all the, you know, all the buildings for your layout with one bottle, really. Um, so it's worth it. It's about six quid, I think. Um, right, how do I clean the tip out? Yeah, what I tend to do is, well, I haven't done this before because I normally do leave it, or I normally run downstairs to quickly rinse the tip out. What I use is a syringe which you can get from Amazon. We sell them on the website for a few P, 50p or something, but you can get them from the uh, Amazon chemists, all sorts, talk to a doctor nicely, might give you one, doesn't need a needle on it, obviously. Um, all you do is you fill the syringe up with water, you put the tip, luckily the tip fill, fits perfectly on these syringes. It, it's a five mil syringe, put the tip on the syringe, squirt the water out into the sink, do that half a dozen times and it rinses it out. What you're also supposed to do, and I'm trying it today to see if it works. So I'll let you know whether this works or not. Um, when you finish using it, is if you have a mug or something with wet tissue in the bottom, you're supposed to stand that upside down on the tissue so it keeps the tip wet and, in theory, stops it blocking up. Now, we'll find out in a minute when I come to glue the next bit together. If that's blocked up, that doesn't work. Okay, but that's what it says on the instructions. But I've never tried it before. Right, we have a main bridge, which is good. So now I need to check what the next bit is. Uh, Next bit is gluing the arch in, I think. Yeah, I think so. Just checking to make sure I've got everything right on the instructions. Yes, right, there we go. Yep, so now we've got to, put glue, to glue this bit in. Now, this is a bit that's a bit of a bit awkward, only because it's a little bit tighter than uh, the top pieces. Um, but it's exactly the same principle. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and offer it up. And this is, like I say, a little bit tighter. Let's go from the middle first. Let's get the middle one in. There we go. Middle one in. And now, because this is a bit springy, it has a tendency to try and pull itself out, which is a bit of a nuisance. Which is why I've got to try and glue it and hold it in. Um, for a few minutes, so I'll have to just waffle. Uh, so, uh, morning, Simon. Morning, Lee. Um, yes, thank you for everybody watching. We've got 87 people watching us now. That's brilliant. That's amazing, actually. Really amazing. So that's how that goes in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run a bit of glue into each of the grooves in here. I'm going to run a bit around the out, around the inside of the bridge wall. So let's did this work then? Putting the glue on wet paper. What happened? Oh, it did. Wow. It works. That saves me running downstairs quickly, trying to wash the glue out and faffing around with all sorts of things and trying to poke paper clips and goodness knows what into the tip to try and unblock it. I've even drilled it out before with a Dremel because um, I forgot about it. So what I'm going to do is put some glue in there. Like try and work relatively quickly because I don't want this to go off before I put the, the arch in. I'm just going to put that on there. And a bit more. Oh, I'm shaking again. Look. 
for no reason. Pull that around there. Hopefully you can all still hear me and it's all working, still working all right. Okay, put that back in there. Right, so let's try and get this back in. So I'll bend it round, squeeze both ends to get the curve in. Right, I'm going to push that into there. And now, while holding it, try and fiddle the other pieces around a bit to get them to sit in, in there. Now, as you can see, it's got a bit of a tendency to try and pull itself back out again. So what I've got to do now is just try and hold it for perhaps a minute or two. I usually, when I built the other one, wrap it in elastic bands because it holds it quite well. But what I'm going to try and do, so while I do this, I'm just going to try and fill in, you see what I'm doing, fill in some of the gaps and tease a bit of glue into any of the little gaps there. So that it's got a better chance of gripping at some point. It will grip. Just takes a minute or two. But I couldn't, didn't really want to do this. I could have done a, a Blue Peter thing and done his while I glued earlier, but this just shows you, I suppose, the more, most awkward part of the assembly of it. And if you can crack this, then you've cracked it all. The rest of it is easy. Right. I'll carry on holding that for another minute or two. Uh, somebody says about, are we still open? Uh, you want a few, few close pegs? Yeah, that would be good, actually. Yeah, close pegs would work. Anything, something, um, it's only because I'm trying to do this normally. So you glue this, put elastic bands around it, and disappear and go and make a cup of coffee or something and come back 10 minutes later. But I'm taking the mickey, really, expecting to sit watching this while I go and make a cup of coffee. So I can't really do that. So I'm just going to wait for that for a minute or two. It's starting to grab. I just don't want it to ping out while I start putting the wraps on because then it'll look awful. And we don't want that. We want a nice looking bridge. I'll just keep teasing a bit of glue into the gaps. And then at some point, it will be done. It's nearly that. Somebody said, are we still open? Or is it yes, we're, uh, yeah, we are still open. We're still working safely. Normally we're wearing masks. I'm not wearing a mask at the moment because I'm sat here building this upstairs. Um, but we're wearing masks. We're being careful. We're doing everything we can to comply to all rules and regulations. But we are still open and taking orders. Whoops, that's my phone fell over. Let's stand that up because I can see what's going on. That's better. Um, put that back in there a minute. I'm just going to sit and hold this. So, yeah, we're still open. Um but, oh, well, uh, oh, thanks, Paul. Yes, you don't know, doubt if yours will arrive. Quickly. If you've just ordered it just now, it's not likely to arrive in the next 10 minutes, but it'll be there in a day or so. Um, but they say this, this build will be available on the YouTube channel and everywhere else um, if you want to watch it again or work through it. But obviously, you don't, wouldn't then have to watch me in real time wait for this thing to dry. But I should put a hair dryer. Um, it is gripping. Um, yeah. It, Obviously, we're now down in Cornwall. Um, we are, we're planning at some point to do uh, click and collect. We will be opening click and collect down here um, as soon as it's safe enough to do so. Um, if anybody really does want to pick stuff up, we can arrange it, sort of. Um, the best thing would be we'd, we'd leave it outside in a box outside the uh, main door and you can just come and collect it when you're ready, that sort of thing. If you did want to pop down and pick one up if you're in Cornwall. Excuse me, I need a quick drink of water. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to keep a, an eye on all the comments that are coming in now. Um, right, so it's, oh, morning, Ben, you're right. Um, yeah, ooh, 94 people watching now, blimey. 
Right, this is definitely starting to grip because it's not popping out now, which is good. So another minute or so, if that, it probably will have gripped it properly, hopefully. A couple of bits there weren't pushing in, but whether it will grip that, I don't know. Anyway, like I say, if you wrap this in elastic bands, you can just walk off and leave it. It'll sit, it'll be fine. Um, but it's just because I'm doing this live. I'm waiting for it to thingy. And I haven't really got anything else to do apart from cut around one arch. Um, so give us a minute. Anyway, anybody else got any questions? Um, oh, Paul says, supposed to be doing this tax return, but this is way more interesting. Crikey. Well, I suppose, yeah. yeah. But tax returns are essential. Yeah, if you've got a tax return, get it in, get it finished. Um, yeah, I suppose this is more interesting than tax return, to be honest. I've got to help Ollie do this in a day or two. Right, I think we can probably just about let go of that, I think. It might pop in a bit there, but probably sort that out in a bit. Right, so I'm going to leave that. I think I just want to be confident it's not going to all pop out and end up looking a right mess. Right, well, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. Let's see what happens. Right, so if you've got more patience than me and more time, then you can wait for that to glue or clamp it, elastic bands, whatever. So we're about to apply the wraps in a second, which will go on to the side of the bridge on there. So this is all just paper. It's printed paper textures. We've got those to go on the side. There's one here, which Tina cut out for me yesterday. You just need to finish quickly whizzing around the arch. So I'm just cutting... Well, you can see the detail on that, but I'm just cutting around the, around the bits there, around here, just so they can bend underneath the arch of the bridge. So just got to quickly. Well, so you don't need to actually cut the white bits out. You just need to put a slit in it, really. It's kind of marked in white, so you can see what to cut. Just go up to the edge of the, um, the stones where the fold will be. There's sort of a dark grey line around the edge of the arch so you can see quite easily which bits you need to cut up to. There we go, nearly that. Right. Okay, so that's that wrap. So we're going to do this bit. So we need these two wraps. Make sure this hasn't popped out too far. It's moved a bit, but might better convince it to stay there with the wrap. We'll see. Right, this is the bit where I use a bit of yoo-hoo to stick the wraps on. And this is, I'll show you a technique that I kind of quite like for the wraps. I call it the kid's scribbling technique. All I do is I'm going to cover the side, the whole side of the bridge with yoo-hoo. Hardly squeezing the tube, just squeezing it enough to get a little bit out. It's very, very little pr pressure. And I'm just doing a kind of scribbling technique all over the entire bridge side. So I'm not squeezing the tube, pretty much gravity is just letting the gravity is letting the uh, glue come out of the tube and I'm just whizzing it round all over the bridge side obviously it's quite wet um, so what I'm going to do is just give it a quick blow or we'll leave it to dry for 10-15 seconds but give it a gentle blow just take some of the shine off the yoo-hoo because I don't want too much on there um, then we're going to hope that this arch hasn't moved too much, moved a little bit, but we'll work with it. Position that now centrally on the bridge using the arch, archway to line it up. Now what I want is the top of the bridge. So the nice thing about using you here is you can move stuff about a bit for a few seconds after you've applied your wrap you can still sort of nudge things and stretch things and pull it about a bit so smooth the wrap on all i've done is lined the edge of this archway here where i cut up to with the arch on the inside of the bridge so i'll put that one on do that and then leave that to dry turn it over do the other one and then let me, uh... Sorry, I'm just trying to keep an eye on the comments as well as I'm doing this. Any questions anybody's asking? Um, but we're all right at the minute. 
hopefully then it's all fairly self-explanatory and um, right cover the other side i use you for any gluing of texture wraps because it doesn't make the paper soggy um you can use print stick and stuff like that but i don't, don't like print stick certainly don't like pva for gluing wraps on you who because it's sort of solvent based this one's solvent based it doesn't seem to um cause papers to go soggy and stretch and bubble and things like that whereas you uh, like you pva can be a complete nightmare right so that's the other side done put the other wrap on line it up so this wrapping business isn't rocket science at all all it's going to do is create a model at the end of it it's got no visible card edges apart from obviously the card coping stones that go on the top which are visible because the card so that goes on there so that's that that's both sides done and covered so we'll do the easy bit next we'll cover the ends up so again it's kind of scribbling technique but we're going to do it on the wrap this time so i'm going to try and get enough just enough glue onto that wrap yeah not too much but if you get too much on you just got to leave it a bit longer to dry before you wrap it around that's all as it all it'll all lose out so all I'll do is I'll do a couple at a time, give it a chance to dry. By leaving it to dry, it goes tacky rather than sort of wet and squashy. Um, in fact, I'll do all four. And if it's tacky, then you can just bend it over and press it down and it will stick, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. Leave it too long, obviously it loses its stick. Right, that's that one. And this one. Right, that's done. Put the lid back on that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is use my finger, sort of roll the wrap over the, the thing. is nice thing the MDF you see is you get a sharp edge, but just by rolling your finger over, over that over the, the edge of the MDF or the corner, you can get a nice sharp edge to it. So all I'm doing now is I'm just pinching these bits of the wrap in here. I'm trying not to get any glue anywhere. If you're working on a stone wrap, obviously if you get glue on it, you can hardly see it. If it's brick, you can see a little bit, but there's a little tiny bit of glue I've just smeared up the side there. Like a fool, but there you go. Um, I'll do the one, I'll do these ends now. So again, roll, just use your finger to roll over the edge. You can use a, sh a straight edge like a ruler and press it down if you want to, but finger will do. On MDF anyway, if it's card, you'll, if you use your finger, you'll tend to round the card off. Um, but it's fine for MDF. So you can see there we're covering up the ends. You can see that. Yeah. It's starting to look nice and neat on the ends there. So I'll do these. How long have we been running? What's the time? Half oh, past ten. That's not too bad. Half an hour. So that's that one. And that one. Okay. And do the final one. Make sure they're all pinched down nice and tight. And that's that. I'll just check on the instructions what I'm supposed to do next so I don't go ahead of myself. Okay. Yep, right, we're down, we do the inner, inner wraps and we do these on there. Right, okay. So now I'm just going to work around, see all these. Uh, how can you see it? Uh, that which way? That way. There. Right, these these flaps here. We need to fold these around now and glue them down. So all I'm going to do is use the rocket thingy, not the rocket, laser cut kit glue, only because it's got a fine tip on it. Again, rocket would do because that's fine tip. Um, I just want to put just enough glue on each tab, hardly any at all. Just a little blob. On each of the tabs, I work around from the side to the middle one. And all I'm going to do is use my finger again just to ease them over. Yeah. There we go. That starts to tidy up the edge around the arch now. Look. See that there? Starts to tidy that up. So, 
it's very quiet downstairs. I'm hoping nobody's not, not all just trying to listen to me because that would be really embarrassing. Hopefully you can still hear me okay. Right, so that's that. Just going to fold those over. On that side. That one's done. So I'll whiz around and do this one. Uh, somebody just asked about typical Cornish buildings. Well, actually, we have an engine house, which is due for release very shortly. Uh, and a few other bits. We've got, obviously, the barn was based on something, the KX57. Technically, the design was based on uh, a design up in the Peak District, but there are millions of them down here. Maybe not millions, but quite a lot. Um, and they're all of the same design, and the stone we used on the barn kit is actually similar stone on the same wall as this one. Um, so that's technically Cornish stone. Dylan's working on uh, a few buildings um, which are sort of, excuse me, um, bigger, more elaborate versions of the barn, which could be used for any kind of um, Cornish industrial building, I suppose. Uh, but we're doing, a, say, we've got a tin mine, which um, Dylan's drawn up majority of. We've got to get our heads around how to do the chimney. We have a way of doing the chimney. We can make the chimney work in the same manner here. We've just got to finish the drawings for it. So that would use a living, living hinge, but we're on the case with that one, and it'll be released, I'm hoping, end of this month, early next month. Um, but that's, say, in the pipeline. Um, but yeah, engine house, definitely on the cards. Uh, so that's that bit done. So we've, we've covered that now. So now we have a nice sort of neatish looking, hopefully, bridge type thing. So next one is wraps for the inside here. So back to the trusty you who uh, I'm going to. Uh, Richard says, are we planning? Sorry, I'm trying to read comments again. Are we planning to do a tour? Uh, for those who are not, yes, we are going to do a tour. And um, the reason I haven't done a tour yet is because we're still in, shall we say, a state of flux. Uh, as my father-in-law says, um, we are currently building racking and things for laser room, for the laser room and for uh, or workbenches for picking and packing. So once they're done and we've had a bit of a tidy up and a bit more structured, yes, I will do a tour, definitely. Um, in fact, what I'll do, I'll do the yoo-hoo for both sides of this because that's going to take a bit to dry there. Um, yes, we will be doing a, a tour, absolutely. There'll be more sort of behind the, behind the scenes stuff. Um, we built the reception area just before Christmas. Um, it needs a bit more work down there. We've got to put some kits on display and things like that. Um, but it all takes time, unfortunately. So I'm just kind of doing it when there's a bit of spare spare time here and there. I'll, I'll try and show you before we finish, actually, that we've got um, a little bit of a mini exhibition area up here so that when we do stand up and talking videos, we can stand in front of an exhibition stand. So it looks a bit like the wall we stand over, over that way um, at the moment. So it's quite smart. Right, I've covered that with YooHoo. Hopefully not too much, so I'm going to get it everywhere. And now what we're going to do is put these in. So these are the wraps for the inside of the wall. So I'll try and do this so you can see what I'm doing as well. In theory, I should just fit in something like that. There's a little bit of a, cap, a gap there by the bridge deck, but I'm not too worried about that because we're going to put the laser board in and we're going to put the um, wrap as well for the bridge deck. So I'm not too worried. I don't know what you can see. It. There's a little bit of a gap just in there above the deck. But by the time we put the laser board in and then we put the paper wrap on the top, that pretty much eat up all of that gap on the wrap there, which rhymes. Um, right, so this one. B. Make sure that's glued down nicely. Oh, the corner needs a bit of. See, I didn't put this in the in the stand, so that's probably blocked up now. But anyway, All right, do this one. Same principle. Line it up about the middle of the bridge. Not too much of a gap anywhere along it. 
obviously because you're putting coping coping stones along the top here if you've got a little bit of a gap up at the top of the bridge um it doesn't matter too much because you won't see it because it's going to be hidden by the coping stones which overhang each side so you'll get away with that All right so there we go that's the inside of the bridge done if you can see that there we've got the the wrap on that so we've pretty much fully covered all the walls now the uh, next bit of wrap is the oh, road tech road surface so cut this out this is just point two more laser board so i'm going to cut this one out just release the little bits that are holding the part in the sheet always down through that okay that one. There we are. Now, this should now hopefully lie in there just about a little bit tight on the edges. So I'm just going to trim just a tiny bit of it. Just the wrap you see, and the, and the and the glue takes up a bit of a little bit of space. So I'm just going to trim the very edge off that. Not even half a millimeter, I don't think. Just a tiny bit off that curve, and I'll do the same on the other side. Just the tiniest bit. Try to take too little off, and then trim it again if necessary. Get off there. Off there. Right, let's see if that fits now. Better, better that end. Again, it's quite tight. There we go. That's all right. It goes in now. There we go. So you may not need to trim it. it just depends, you see, because the, obviously the glue and the paper and all the rest of it, it all has a thickness to it. Um, and while my glue on here is still a little bit wet, it's perhaps a bit, still a bit sort of bit of thickness to it. So that's going to go on there. So I'm going to use good old you here again. Brilliant, this stuff. Quid from the pound shop, obviously. Um, won't be anything else, would it? But for a pound, it's probably the most versatile modelling glue I think there is, particularly for gluing wraps on and stuff like that. It's amazing stuff. Right, let's cover that. Enough. It doesn't need to be completely covered, but a good dose. There we are. Right, sorted. Yeah, cheers, Paul. My glue nearly did dry, but it's all right actually. Now I'll put it in, put it back in its wet pot, shall we say? Uh, right. Bridge deck goes in like that. Rub that down. And for those that missed earlier, the reason why we've got these flappy bits on the end here is so you can blend that into your layout now so that gives you a bit of um, flexible road surface um, and again as I said before we have these extensions for the country road surface we will be releasing this as a texture sheet actually so you can build your own country roads with curves and various other things but it's a quite a nice you can see the texture on that or not hard to tell but it's, it's quite nice I'm quite pleased with that country road texture it worked quite well so we've got these longer ones so you can put this on um, you put the wrap on the top and then you can extend the, your road out from there just to give you a way of blending it into the um, road and the other in infrastructure on your layout. Right, nearly done now. It's flying through. Right, wrap again. More you who Cover the whole thing again. Certainly around the edges. Doesn't matter so much about the middle. Um, but edges and corners and things like that. Make sure you get plenty in there. All the way over. Get into the corners there. Corners around the joint of the bridge ends, bridge walls end. More you here over the middle. That should be good enough, I think. No, we're not. Like that. Quite good now, right? Wrap on. This shouldn't really need trimming because you can sort of push it into the edges and corners and things. 
on the paper ones, obviously there's more gib in the paper than there is in the laser board. So trying to get this to fit is a lot easier. So I'll just give that a smooth down onto the road. And because we've put the laser board underneath the paper wrap, you can't see the ridges from the living hinge underneath on the on the bridge deck. Yeah, so that's that done. Oh, wet pot. Uh, wet pot, that's a wet pot. All it is is um, it's a mug with some wet tissue in the bottom. So I put the glue in there. This this laser cut kit glue from Deluxe needs to be stored upside down. I don't, I very, I, well, I've never done this before until today, but it works a treat. It says on the instructions to do this. I normally end up leaving it and forgetting that I've left my glue standing on the side and I have to go and clean the tip out then with a syringe and a drill bit and God knows what. So that's, that's the wet pot there. It's a coffee mug and a bit of wet tissue and that's it, just stand the glue in there, upside down. It doesn't all leak out, it just keeps the tip wet. Um, so you won't lose all your glue in the bottom there, it just makes sure that the air doesn't get to it. Just same as putting a cap on, I suppose, but there isn't a cap for that thin, um, what's it, glue tip. Right, so that's the road deck done. Uh, next step, turn the bridge over. We're gonna complete the underside of the bridge now, more wrapping. This is quite a nice, easy one rectangle of stone wrap I'm just about to see the stones there that goes in there to cover the arch underneath so i'm going to put that on exactly the same principle as before we're nearly done after this we've just got the coping to put on and that'll be it time to get some work done um so You who, as normal, scribble all over it with the glue. Just enough to give it a bit of a sort of an even coating if you can. Only because it's a wrap and you don't want the wrap to peel, so you want to go to the edges and things. Try not to get too much you who on the laser printed um, texture wraps because with it being a solvent, it will dissolve the um, toner if you're not careful. So if you're using you who, just be careful. With the amount you get on obviously on the tabs here it's fine because i'm covering those anyway you just don't want to get it on the front faces of anything if you're using the eco-friendly yoohoo it's probably um not solvent based in which case it won't affect the wraps at all right that's that enough glue in there what we do now pop that wrap into the thing don't be frightened of using wraps at all. The kits, I know our stuff is different to Metcalf and all the rest of it. Um, with it be using wraps, wraps aren't difficult to work with at all. It just needs, it just needs a little, little bit of extra patience, but not a lot. The whole principle being that when you're finished, you have no visible cut card edges. Yes, you can see a visible edge of paper there, but you can soon remove that with a very soft pencil. Um, which, I don't know what it would be. A, 2B or a 4B pencil or something, you'd run a bit around there, or a felt pen just to disguise that white, that very white edge there. Um, but there's no, otherwise there's no visible edges at all on the kit when it's done. So that's the main construction. All we've got to do now is add the coping stones, which are here, and the other one I've got to cut out. So, and then we're done. Um, is there no laser wrap on the underside of the arch? Yes, we've done that, just done that. There we go. That's all we need, that bit there, so that's the bit. So apologies if you asked me that before I did it, but that's the wrap underneath the arch there, John, which hides that. Uh, and it is nearly, nearly a cup of tea time. Yeah, I'm parched, to be honest. Um, I will say hi to everybody at SMS on your behalf, David, definitely. I didn't know whether Tina might join me briefly, but she's she's busy working downstairs and probably trying to avoid coming upstairs. Um, but yeah, that's wrapped now underneath, underneath the arch. So the whole bridge there is wrapped apart from the top of the side walls which we're just about to do so you can either use you who or um the deluxe glue for this i'll probably use the deluxe to be honest because i don't want too much glue um so what i'm going to do now is try not to say um too much release the um coping stones these are quite fragile because they're only from thin 0.75 mil gray board but being that thin and delicate, it actually allows us to shape them to the to follow the path of the uh, what's it? 
and my dad's just messaged and said it's everywhere so i'm assuming i'm also live on instagram now and i didn't realize um but my dad's obviously watching and just uh he's just texted me uh which is interesting how many people are watching 92 still that's right so yeah nearly done so this is the very last bit so a bit of glue from the wet pot put a reasonable amount on because i want it to hold tightly on the curves of the bridge walls they're not very sharp curves or anything but um and these coping stones are quite flexible but i don't want, i want it to sort of grab quickly and not come undone right so glue glue's on all i'm going to do now is try and position these there should be about a millimeter overlap i think on each end just about a millimeter or so anyway so all i'm doing is trying to tease this around the bend a bit of pressure just to get it to grip and get it to follow these curves nicely again a bit of pressure on the end there just to hold that while that goes off i don't know if you can see i'll try and hold it up in a minute so you can see the curves um, but it follows quite nicely actually so that's that one that should have got now pretty much i think just that end bit a little bit there's a little bit of play in it yeah so that should hopefully now where are we there you can see the coping stones follow the, follow the curve of the bridge nicely they follow that way and that way and should leave you with a reasonably nice edge i've done that edge that's the one we'll do right turn it around do the other edge then we're done so that'll be it so that is pretty much the end of this morning's show really <laughs> hope you've enjoyed watching it um hope it's been interesting and hope it's um shown you how a few of our kits go together a lot of, a lot of the kits are based on the same principle um some obviously use card cores some use um mdf cores probably switching to mdf cores more so now for the um laser cut stuff just because it's quicker for you guys to build to be honest and gives you a, a, a much more solid core to the building so if you are building stuff to go into your uh, loft and garage or shed and things like that it's probably got a better chance of surviving a lot longer um than just a card building um, but the principle is still the same and um, so there we go that is the kx59 yeah 59 humpback red look double check for a minute uh kx59 humpback bridge that's the build that is it done as i say you've got the extensions if you want to add extra roadway to it but when it goes on your layout but there's the there it is it done nice and simple easy kit to do um thank you everybody for watching thanks oh i and did as you're in the in there watching um thanks lee um good to have as many people watching as we did we we're up to 97 at one point which is brilliant so thank you all for watching. Hope you, hope you enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed it, really. Once I got going, it's all right. Um, time for a cup of coffee and get some other bits done now. Um, but there you go, KX59, available through on our website, scalemodelscenery.co.uk, on our um, eBay shop, the Amazon shop, and everywhere else. Give Ian and Dylan a ring if you want to order one and things like that. So anyway, thank you very much. Thanks everybody for watching. I'm going to disappear and get some work done. Thank you. I'll see you later.